Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, really happy to be here to talk about uh, clearly what is a topic of interest to everybody, which is Gen Z. Uh, we've heard a panel some time back also talking about the same thing, and I'm going to kind of share our learnings and thoughts of talking to this uh, target audience itself. Uh, for us, interestingly enough, Gen Z is not just a word that we want to talk about from a future perspective. We already have 10 million customers who are Gen Z, so it's a very, very real audience and a cohort that we go after because they drive business uh, for us. Uh, so just to start talking about some of the numbers from a Gen Z perspective, anywhere between 250 to 300 million Gen Z in the country is what estimates are. We know that over 100 million of them are shoppers, right, across the spectrum. And we know that there are 50 million of them who are actually e-com shoppers. Uh, so again, as an audience, as a cohort, when we talk about them from a future perspective, we also have to realize that even today, they are a very strong business uh, building cohort, right? So today, 50 million, as far as we are concerned, e-com shoppers. Tomorrow, it's the same, who, which will become 250 million plus. So for any brand, uh, I don't think this is a cohort that we, you, you can ever ignore. Uh, and of course, the cohort does is do everything online. Uh, as the slide says, they live online, they connect online, and they entertain themselves online. So whether it's the amount, number of hours they spend, over seven hours a day digitally, 50% uh, of them like to share things online, 70% of them are active on OTT, right? So huge online consumers, huge content consumers is who they are, uh, and therefore it's important to understand how we can talk to them. As we were building things around for this cohort and audience, and because we kind of see their behavior on the app, we've kind of learned a few things about what they seek, and therefore sharpened our strategy towards that. Uh, the three things, one is they seek an Im immersive shopping experience. They see themselves as a cohort which is different from anybody else, right? We've all had cohorts, right, from Gen X to Millennials to uh, uh, Gen Z. Gen Z are the most differentiated cohort. They think of themselves as the most differentiated cohort. So they want brands to give them a space and an architecture that's designed for Gen Z. So that was very important for us to create. Second is just from an insight into what they seek from a fashion perspective. Uh, they seek trends. Uh, for them, what is happening today, right now, latest, is very important because that helps craft for them their sense of identity. If there's one thing uh, this cohort is very, very strong at and very good at, it is understanding what their sense of identity is and very clear on how they want to portray it to the world. Uh, from a fashion lens, that's about trends, and I think that, that's where the second insight came from. And the third one is, which was spoken about even in the earlier panel, is a sense of community building. For them to feel like they are part of a group of similarish cohort, because they believe in that kind of interpersonal acknowledgement itself. So these were the three pillars. I'll break down into how we kind of brought it to life. So the first one is about building immersive experience itself. So one thing that we did just as getting into the app itself is the first part, which is uh, we created an app and app specifically for Gen Z. So anybody comes into the Mintra app, they kind of got this first screen which said, if you are Gen Z and you want forward, you click on it and you just go to a forward experience directly. You don't see the rest of Mintra, you see forward, which is the brand that we've created for Gen Z. Even if they go to the regular Mintra, on the bottom nav, we had a very clear forward call out to make sure that if that's what you seek, we will take you there. And then, of course, the third one is the forward app and app itself. For us, again, the insight from an immersive perspective was they are social media first. So therefore, how do you build a shopping experience also, which is like social media first? So the use of just these white graphics uh, and the visual treatment, for example, is one starting point of how we made it immersive. The next part of it was how do you really create it video-led first, even from a shopping experience perspective. So through the forward app and app, you will see a lot of video content that gets interspersed with 
the standard catalog that you would see in a, any uh, shopping app. And these are videos that are across three verticals, which are important, again, from a Gen Z perspective. One was about discovery, which is how do I discover new trends and what's happening. Second is how to, which is I want to know how to style A with B, what kind of beauty tips work for me for going to a party versus going out somewhere else, etc. So the education part of it. Uh, and the third part of it, which is important for them, is inspiration. They take inspiration from influencers, creators. They take inspiration, of course, from the regular, what you would call celebrities in, uh, in India today across, you know, both movies and cricket. Uh, so we had video content across all through our app that does this. We have over 500 creators that we work with who are Gen Z cr uh, creators whom we work with who put out content and this content is put out on their social media, whether it is Instagram, Snapchat, etc., and also on our app. So that's the second part of how we made it a little bit more immersive for uh, Gen Z. Uh, and the third part was, I mean, we are a tech fashion platform. Uh, how do you use technology and make it more relevant and immersive for them? So we created features that help them in their purchase journey. So the first one is an AI fashion assistant called Maya. Uh, what she allows you to do is you can converse with Maya on a real-time basis on what you're looking for, and she will help and guide you on your uh, shopping uh, as you go through the shopping journey itself. The second one is uh, what we call My Fashion GPT, because again, the world has moved from doing just specific search terms to doing much more conversational search. So that's what My Fashion GPT does. So you're not just searching for a pink sari, but what you can search for is a pink sari that I'm wearing for to a wedding in Chennai, and it will contextualize that and show you results for that. Uh, that's really what uh, My Fashion GPT is about. The third uh, part of it is uh, the AI stylist, as we call it, which is everybody goes in to buy one article type. I'm looking for a jeans, I'm looking for a top, I'm looking for a dress, etc. But what's important for them to you know, kind of showcase their identity is the full look. So as they're looking for one article type and as they make that choice, what we also auto-recommend to them is this is the rest of the look that you can potentially buy in Mintra to complete the whole look. Uh, the, so the first three are kind of on the fashion side. On the fourth one is on the beauty side, where we have a skin analyzer, which again uh, starts with taking a selfie, and again the back-end engine of that rec basis kind of analyzes your skin uh, texture, etc., gives results, and makes recommendations on the products and uh, the kind of regimen that you need to follow. So this again is helping Gen Z in this journey across Inspire, across Discover, across education on the journey itself. And what we've seen is across uh, all these, anybody who engages with these features, the ability to convert them, the ability to get more revenue from them, the ability to get repeat just increases dramatically. Uh, so this is another tech version of how we did an immersive experience for Gen Z. Moving on to the second part, which is trend first. Uh, you know, trend is super important for them, and there are many kinds of trends. Uh, this is an audience which is digital first, so they know everything that's happening in Milan or New York real time. Uh, they don't depend on someone else to tell them, they know it. Uh, that's one part of it, so it has to break geography. The second part of it is they look for trends which are not just seasonal, but they look for things which are very, very topical and here and now. Right? A great example of that, you know, which is a trend which lasted probably 45 days, was the Barbie trend. Right? When that came in, it was a trend that took off, and everything that was required was required for those 45 days, and we had to kind of respond. So trend we identified was very important, and we kind of brought that to what we offer them. So we said we would bring in 100,000 trend-first tiles, and more importantly, we would update it really fast, real time. So we had over 2,500 weekly drops of the latest trends that they could see every time they came to uh, the app itself. But doing trends is, a, one part of it is simple, which is what you showcase, but the back end part of it is 
extremely difficult because what you have to do is curate and find out trends globally, what's happening on social media everywhere. Again, where tech comes in and plays a role. So the tech team has a trend identification engine which they run, which kind of scours and scouts, uh, scouts you know, social media platforms across the world, fashion first blogs across the world to identify trends real time, which kind of goes into a curation uh, machine which goes into the feedback loop of the designers for them to produce and then it comes down to actually showing it on the app real time for them. So again the back end of trends is super interesting and then how you bring it for to, to the consumers is the front end of it uh, and we said Gen Z look for trends everywhere right and the first place they look for it in social media and we kind of said if you spot a trend anywhere, we will allow you to shop that trend on Mintra. So the first uh, image that you see is Instagram. So let's assume you're looking at Viral Biani and you see someone wearing an outfit that you really like. Real time, you kind of share on Instagram to the Mintra handle and you will get a response back with the clothes which match that image real time. Right, so that was done on Instagram. The same thing happens on our app itself also. So within the app we have image search so you can take a snapshot from a magazine, from social media, search using that image on our app and it will real time show you what are the clothes that match that the most, right? So for everyone it was about not just spotting trends but it is also about closing the loop and buying trends. That was accompanied by a couple of the other widgets which I spoke about which is things that drop daily so that you know it's new. And again, and the fourth one, which is as you're searching for anything, you have a forward trending filter there, which tells you again that not only are you searching for work clothes, party clothes, whatever, but very real time, what is the trending version of it. So this is the uh, piece related to uh, trends itself uh, and how we showcased it. And then of course, the fun part of it is when you really take it to communications and you say it in a fun, engaging manner to the audience. Uh, so this is, a, this is a video that we kind of put out to talk to everyone and say what spot the trend and get the trend is all about. Uh, I'm guessing I just play it. Turned up, I'm so excited. Take a sip of the style, don't bite it. Move to the rhythm of the groove, don't fight it. Ignite it, I wanna shake it, shake it. I love the spotlight, but every time I'm stepping out, I get snapped on sight. It's like, spot it. Got it. Yeah. Here we go, here we go again. Looking like a tan, sugar candy cane. Can't wait to begin. Living on the edge, but we're spotted. First access to latest trends with just a click. Catch the hottest styles now, only on Mintra Phone. Yeah, so this was the fun little video and in the spirit of talking to the cohort, we did two things. One is, of course, whom we used were Gen Z themselves, both Kushi and Vedang. And in the spirit of trending, this is something we launched just before the Archie movie came out. So again, a lot of those pieces kind of worked out well together. So this was on trend. Uh, the last piece is on building community. Uh, and I think the best and only way to do this to this cohort is to go to the campuses, which is where community formation happens. Uh, so we have uh, the Mintra Forward Campus Tribe, which is our uh, you know, loyalty program where we go to campuses and get students to kind of enroll uh, and get benefits out of it. Uh, as we speak today, we are probably going to about 500 plus uh, campuses. We're going to aim to get 2,000 plus campuses uh, by uh, it through this year itself. So that's one part of it. The second part of it is an on the, on the ground event that we do called uh, the forward faces in each campus. Uh, a key insight that you have about a lot of the Gen Z is whether they are working or not, 
you will realize that they all have side hustles and they want to make money because they're not waiting for that first job and everything later to start spending. They're doing it today and right now. And one of the key pieces that they look and aspire for is to become a creator themselves. So the way Forward Faces works is in each college, we kind of do auditions to figure out who's the most fashionable there. Uh, what they need to do is put out social media content tagging us. We look at the likes and uh, you know uh, engagement that they get and we kind of, every college gets two or three ambassadors and we provide them the Mintra platform to become really creators. Uh, whether it is using the Mintra social handle, where on Insta, you know, we are following upwards of 3 million, whether on our app, where we have all those uh, creator videos that I spoke about, we kind of help them in this journey of becoming creators themselves. So that's another aspirational piece for them, which is to become a Mintra forward face, along with the campus tribe, which we kind of build as the larger uh, community piece itself. And what we kind of close is, you know, just in terms of visual imagery across all communication we do, do things which are a lot more trending. Uh, so, you know, you will, the first images of the recent sneaker campaign, which was AI enabled that we kind of did. Uh, the third one is a, a, again, part of the sneaker campaign where we did an augmented reality piece with Snapchat uh, that kind of went forth. And again, where all the youth festivals, as we speak about kind of participating there, the under 25 one is really the last uh, part of it. So uh, catching them where they are, uh, enabling to build the community where they are is really the key. Uh, so yeah, those were the three pieces that I wanted to uh, share with you, which is building an immersive shopping experience was key. Second was being on trend. Uh, and really the third is continuing to build community because that's what this audience really looks for. Thank you very much.